So what happens when we die? It's a question that humanity has wrestled with throughout history. But a new study conducted by NYU may have found some answers. Dr. Sam Parnia is the Director of Critical Care and Resuscitation Research at NYU Langone School of Medicine, where he ran this study. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Parnia. Pleasure, thank you so for having me. What would you say, what actually happens when you're clinically dead? You know, when people die, essentially it's when the heart stops. So this has been going on for as far as we know, millennia, not longer. And when the heart stops, you stop breathing and your brain shuts down and that's how we declare people dead. And that's why we give a time of death and we give them a note. And really, to be honest with you, until about 50 years ago, that was the point of death. So people become lifeless, motionless, the brain shuts down. But now through advances in medicine, we can actually bring people back to life even after they've gone beyond that threshold of death um, and study what happens to them. And one of the interesting things, of course, is that the brain completely shuts down, as I said. But what's fascinating is that the cells inside the body, and particularly the cells inside the brain, mm -hmm. do not suddenly become annihilated. They go through a process of decay that can take a few hours, which is why we can actually medically bring people back to life after they have technically gone beyond that threshold of death for tens of minutes, if not hours of time afterwards. Mm -hmm. And that, of course, raises many interesting questions about what happens when we die. So tell me more about this study. How did you conduct it? And tell me about you know, how you came about reaching your findings, your conclusion. You know, I'm, a, I'm an intensive care doctor, so my job is to essentially save people's lives and prevent them from dying. But unfortunately, people do die, and we try to revive them. What we have found is that over the last few decades, many millions of people have now come back. And many of them have reported, actually, anecdotally, that they've been able to see and hear things going on, even though, from our perspective, they should have been dead and their brain should not be functioning at all. Mm. And so we became intrigued to study this, one, because it was fascinating, and two, because we try to revive people without brain damage and to ensure they don't have any disorders of consciousness, so not becoming like brain damaged or having a vegetative state. At any rate, so this particular study is the largest study ever carried out in the world. It was done in 15 medical centers across the US and in Europe. And we studied more than 2,000 people who'd gone through this cardiac arrest or process of death. And we did not expect people to have any consciousness or, or awareness. Mm -hmm. But intriguingly, up to 40% of people came back and had had a perception of being aware of what was happening to them, even though they had technically gone beyond the threshold of death. Why do you think that is? Well, there's a lot to it. Um, I should also add that among that group, 10% had a very deep, profound mystical experience that was very true to them. But interestingly, 2% actually had full awareness, could describe all the events that were going on that were validated. So of course, the question is, why does that happen? And we don't have the answers, because to our scientific model, when people have died, there should be no more conscious awareness going on. Uh, but it sounds like maybe consciousness is able to continue. And by that, I don't mean that they're awake, but that entity that makes us who we are, makes Sam who he is, makes Rena who she is, the self, the mind, seems to continue and doesn't become annihilated after a person has gone through their process of death. Were there any of the people that you studied that completely lost all consciousness? Well, that's what I was trying to explain. Yeah. Everybody loses consciousness immediately as soon as the heart stops. It's not like they're awake and watching us. But well, you mentioned that there were some people who remembered there was some sort of mystical experience that they were going right. through. Were there some people who said, nope, didn't feel anything, didn't? So some people don't have any recollections. Mm -hmm. What we don't know is whether they had experiences and forgot it afterwards, and that may be what's happening. Because, of course, we forget a lot of things. And most of the people who are brought back have issues to do with their treatments. We give them sedative drugs, which wipes out their memories. So that's part of what we're studying now, is does everybody have this experience? And how long does mind and consciousness continue in some format, even though we've gone beyond the threshold of death? Do you have some sort of conclusion as to how far the mind and consciousness goes? Again, from what we can determine, which yeah. is actually uh, fascinating and it raises questions about our whole science about what yeah. happens when we die is that it appears that even though people have gone beyond that threshold of death and their brain has shut down that entity that we call consciousness the mind the psyche whatever you want to call it does not seem to become annihilated from the evidence we have that at least tens of minutes if not hours of time afterwards mm -hmm. how long beyond that we don't know at this point have the, for the folks who have lost consciousness and come back have there been any long-term effects afterwards well, those people who have these very deep, profound, mystical experiences, mm -hmm. often they describe a, a sensation of being very peaceful, seeing a bright, warm, welcoming light, sometimes deceased relatives. And intriguingly, some of them describe a sensation of uh, a being that they describe as being perfect and full of light and love and compassion. Those who have that experience 
are often very positively transformed for the rest of their lives. It's very profound, really? it's real to them. They become less afraid of death, they lose their fear of death completely, they engage in altruism, they're more uh, helpful to people, they engage more with family. It completely changes them. So there's something very profound about this experience that they have. We often hear people say, I saw the light, some sort of light. Why do you think it is that some people see that and some people don't? Well, so there are two possibilities. One is that, as you said, only some people see it, and we think that you know it might be 10%. But the alternative is that everyone sees it. But unfortunately, because of the medical treatments that they get afterwards in the intensive care unit by doctors such as myself to save their brain, um, they forget it. And one of our new studies is trying to actually decipher whether people have had it but just forgotten about it. Mm. And so I think there is some evidence that more people are having it, but unfortunately they just forget it afterwards. It's a fascinating study and a fascinating okay. look into death and those final moments as well and returning back. Dr. Samparnia, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Us. Pleasure to be yeah. here.